This is Monte Rosa Massif. A group of mountains with over 10 peaks above 4,000 meters, located between Switzerland and Italy. The sheer scale of the neighboring peaks and glaciers would be intimidating to most, but it is a climber's paradise that only a few places in the world offer. Some mountain summits can be reached and descended in one day, while others require more experience and effort to reach the pinnacle. Vincent Pyramid is one of these peaks that climbers can summit in a single trip. It is a common training peak standing at 4,215 meters, lying at the southernmost part of the group. But don't let its neighboring peaks and reputation fool you. It is still a giant peak that can easily punish those that are unprepared. The three Italians that set out to reach the summit would soon realize just how difficult their journey would be. This is their story. Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel where we cover all tragic and terror stories. So if you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, plus ring the notification bell to be notified of all new uploads. And as always, viewer discretion is advised. Vincent Pyramid is entirely located in the Italian territory of the Monte Rosa group. As its name suggests, it is a true pyramid with four ridges that lead to the summit. Most climbers are able to summit the mountain in one day because of the base camp at the valley floor that is accessed through a lift coming from two sides. The northwest side contains the Lice Glacier, which makes it more difficult for those trying to test their skills. The many crevasses that litter the glacier are often hidden, especially early in the summer. This causes climbers to ascend and descend with a rope attached to all members of the group in order to prevent a stray climber from taking a wrong step and falling into the dark void. The most common route up the mountain is from the northwest side starting from the base camp in the valley below. Climbers would enter the Lice Glacier and follow the route diagonally to the northeast along a steep ramp watching out for hidden crevasses. Climbers would then turn north on moderate ice slopes following the path in between the obvious crevasses. This is where the climb already starts to ease, as there are less hidden dangers below. After passing through a series of irregular slopes, you would soon reach a snowy basin below Bailmanhorn at about 4,000 meters. You would make the final turn to the right and climb the northwest slope of Vincent Pyramid, which is usually well traced in the summer months as there could be several groups throughout the mountain on a single day. The weather is not as unpredictable as other mountains such as Denali, so it is a great spot to train and test your climbing skills. Many climbers visit the peak and summit the multiple interconnected mountains during their trip. It is not a typical mountain that requires rescues, yet it still demands the respect of those attempting to summit, as 4,000 meters plus is no small feat. On Saturday, July 3rd, 2021, three Italians decided they wanted to reach the summit of Vincent Pyramid even though there was a prediction of bad weather to come later in the day. 29-year-old Martina Svalupo and 28-year-old Paola Viscardi were joined by their 27-year-old male friend Valerio Zola to take on the perceived easy high-altitude climb. They would approach the mountain from the Italian side and climb up the northwest path from the base camp. Their plan was to reach the summit and descend the mountain before the winds and low clouds rolled in. If they were caught on the mountain when the weather turned, it would make the climb significantly worse. But the group was not worried. Whether it was foolishness or being naive, we would never fully understand what led to that decision but they would set out from the base camp with the summit on their minds. All three climbers came prepared in light mountaineering gear. Since the climb and descend would be in one day, there was no need to bring enough supplies for an overnight trip. After they set out, they quickly realized they were the only group on the popular mountain, but were rather happy about having a clear trail and made good time traversing the lower part of the slope. From base camp, it looked rather odd watching the faint outline of three individuals climb the glacier alone. On any other day, you would see a trail of climbers, but not today. 
The path that Martina, Paola, and Valerio walked on was easy to follow since it was heavily used during the season. In fact, the entire path to the summit is pretty straightforward, so they couldn't help but have smiles on their faces as they walked, step after step, with their light jackets and gear on. Martina and Paola were best friends and loved to climb together to share in the joys of reaching a summit. They had spoken particularly about this trip and were thrilled to be here. It was late morning by the time they reached the last stretch and everything was going great, but there was a light wind that was getting stronger by the hour. Yet there was no turning back. They were so close. Feeling slightly out of breath, they pushed on and reached the summit just after noon. Although 4,000 meters is less than half the size of mountains such as Everest and K2, it was still an incredible sight. Martina and Paola first noticed how small the summit was and just how many neighboring peaks there were. But nonetheless, they stood on top in an embrace while Valerio snapped a few pictures for them. They were exhausted, yet exhilarated. Their huge smiles beamed on all three of their faces. This is what it was all about. They rested on the summit for a couple of minutes, yet as they looked out, there were clouds already setting in below them, and the wind was noticeably worse than at any other point throughout their climb. The trio looked at each other as their smiles slowly began to fade. Reality had set in, and they were only halfway done with their trip. So, with mixed emotions of what was yet to come, yet still riding the high of reaching the top of the peak, they took their first steps down the slope, making their way towards the basin below Bailmanhorn. They had climbed through the low clouds on the way to the summit, disappearing into the white wall of mist that blended into the slope. The sun shining on their backs one second, then gone the next as they entered the cloud. They were forced to walk with little space in between them, as any more than a few feet would cause one to lose sight of the person in front of you. The trio was initially concerned by the mist, but they were there for a reason, so with no hesitation, they continued walking with determination on their faces. They walked on the path down the mountain, one step then another, yet after 10 to 20 minutes of walking, they continuously looked at each other's faces. Their looks said all the words that could not escape their lips. Nobody was sure of where they were. The path was not the same as before, and yet they could not see more than a few feet 360 degrees around themselves. To make matters worse, soon after they left the summit, the winds had picked up dramatically. The weather had turned for the worse with temperatures dropping to negative 4 degrees Celsius, but the wind chill made it feel like negative 15 degrees Celsius. Their smiles were long gone, and the path could no longer be found as the wind constantly blew snow around as if it was weightless. The trio was truly lost. They were prepared for the climb, but they had not prepared for this type of weather, and their light jackets and clothes could not protect them from the harsh cold. Their teeth started to chatter as they continued to walk, yet all they heard was the howl of the wind in their ears. All three felt the fear radiating from each other, but nobody could admit it. The mountain was screaming as a warning, telling them that they were not supposed to be there. Following a safe path was a genuine concern, as falling into a crevasse would mean certain death. All three were quiet as they walked, as speaking would have done no good. The chill of the mountain hitting their cheeks like a slap in the face. They had the same thought in their heads as they walked. This could not last long. After a couple minutes of being unable to accept defeat, they finally gave in. Luckily, one of the few items they did bring was a satellite phone. So the trio pulled it out and made the first call to the rescue center in Aosta at 2 p.m. They were unable to provide their exact location as the group simply did not know where they were. And while they were on the phone, they heard a sharp click, barely audible above the wind. Their call had dropped. They pressed the emergency keys again and again, trying to reach anyone, but the storm made it impossible. It slowly sunk in as they looked at each other. They were alone. In the valley below, rescue teams began to get ready, along with a couple miles away, a helicopter fueling up to help in any way, even if this meant flying into a dangerous storm. 
Within minutes, they were in the air flying head first into the low clouds that had settled on the mountain. Martina, Paola, and Valerio huddled together as the wind raged around them. They covered their faces, or as best as they could with their light clothes. They had looked for any refuge or cover from the wrath of the elements. But there was nothing, nothing but snow. When suddenly they heard a noise overhead, it was difficult to make out over the wind, but a distinct noise. They instantly recognized. It was a helicopter. They could not move, so they did the only thing they could. They tried to make another call. This time, it worked, and Valerio shouted through the phone that the helicopter was right above them. The air rescue team continued flying over the mountain, despite the storm looking for any signs of life. But even as the winds began to calm, it was difficult to make anything out along the white slope. It had been a few hours since they were notified of a trio of climbers who needed help, and they were beginning to lose hope of finding them. The pilot was becoming anxious as the fuel gauge had slowly moved closer and closer to the bright red E in the bottom left corner as he flew. They did not have long, but he had to continue flying. He had to find them. It was late afternoon when he saw a small dot on the mountainside near the summit, and as he flew closer and closer, he knew it was them. There was no possible way of him making a safe landing in this weather, but he had accomplished his job. He picked up his radio and let the ground team know the good news. He had found the climbers at roughly 4,150 meters. He was able to land lower on the mountain below the clouds, and there he waited for the ground team. The rescuers had already entered the storm and had been climbing for over an hour. It was strange how quickly the weather had turned. One minute it was clear snow, and another they were surrounded by blizzard temperatures and low clouds. A few rescuers believed in the omens of the mountain, and it was clear that they were not supposed to be there. Yet they knew three young climbers needed their help, so they walked on. Once receiving direction from the air rescue team, roughly an hour prior, they made quick work through the snow, as all ground members were familiar with the mountain. Determination littered the faces of the group as they walked, one step after another, following the man in front of you, when suddenly there was a small dark jacket poking above the snow. They had reached the group. Three heads poked up as they heard the shouting voices over the wind. They saw the group walking towards them, but only Valerio was able to speak at this point. They were all shaking violently, their bodies fighting the cold the only way it could. Rescuers quickly checked Martina, Valerio, and Paola, but their faces were distraught. There was no time, as both Martina and Paola were in bad shape. Martina was in late stages of hypothermia, and her body was starting to give up. She was in what is known as the hide-and-die syndrome. They had to get her down the mountain, now. So the group, with the waves of emotion of newfound energy, turned away from the summit and began descending the mountain. Valerio was able to stand on his own and walk with the group, yet could do nothing but follow the man in front of him. Martina and Paola could not move on their own and would have to be carried off the mountain. The group of rescuers did not skip a beat, strapping both girls into their respective rescue baskets and starting to descend. Although they made good time, it was still hours of climbing before they were able to reach the helicopter. Hours of laying in the cold for Martina and Paola, shaking violently as the winds continued to rage around them. But they hung on, and soon the helicopter was in sight. The rescuers did not stop walking even after the winds and clouds faded away. They still felt the shaking basket, which gave them hope that there was still a chance. They made it to the helicopter. They had done it. The air rescue team pulled all three climbers into the bird that sat on the lower part of the glacier of Vincent Pyramid. It stood out against the white surroundings as a beacon of hope. But something was wrong. As soon as they pulled the trio into the helicopter, they had taken off, but Martina was no longer shaking. She was no longer moving at all. It was too late. They jumped into action, attempting CPR and rubbing their warm hands on her body in an attempt to warm her up. The look of hope long gone from their faces as they flew above the mountain. They tried to bring her back, but it was in vain. 
she was gone. Their faces sunk. They had fought for so long and were so close, but their job was not done. They were able to reach the Montova refuge, but Valerio was the only member still conscious. Paola's chest was slowly rising and falling. She was breathing, but barely. They quickly got her off the chopper and into the refuge where doctors got to work. Hours went by, but Paola still had not opened her eyes. It was dark outside, and Valerio waited patiently for any news. His head held in his hands as he waited. He had made it, but was hardly able to digest his emotions. He still felt nothing but fear and despair. Later in the night, as doctors continued to work, they heard a deep inhale and everyone freezed for a second, then a long exhale and there was no other breath. Paola had joined her best friend. Valerio was the only member of the group that survived the climb. Martina and Paola passed away due to frostbite, with Martina entering cardiac arrest soon after reaching the helicopter. Both were simply best friends who loved mountains and biology. Months before the incident, Paola would post, we will return to hug each other in our mountains, a tribute to their love. This tragedy serves as a reminder of the dangers that lie on all mountains, whether it be 8,000 meters or 4,000. Mother Nature always deserves our respect.